Do you have an iPhone that boot loops like this, or just a constant on and off Apple logo? There's a lot of things that can cause an iPhone to boot loop. And in today's video, we're going to walk through some troubleshooting steps to diagnose this type of issue, as well as how to fix this particular device, which gives me an error nine during restore. Hi, I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the channel. Make sure you smash that like button if you like these tutorials, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this, and share this video with a friend who has a boot looping iPhone. Also, don't forget down below in the video description, I'll link to all the tools I used today, as well as where to buy this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. It says eat, sleep, fix, repeat. So if you do phone repairs, this will be a good shirt to get. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. Okay, so let's go through some basic troubleshooting steps. When you have an iPhone that's boot looping, there's a million things that can cause it. In many cases, it's just a parts issue. So in this case, let's just see what happens when we plug it in to charge. And here on the upper left, you'll see there's a chart with a that shows the USB charging current. This is the green number uh, with the A at the end. This is how many amps are being uh, pulled by the device um, for wanting to charge. So th uh, this charging number is pretty useful for diagnosing because you can see it wants to charge, but then it stops and the Apple logo goes blank. So that's one of the first things I like to check is the charging current. If it doesn't go up to like a normal charging current, which is usually about one amp or more, then maybe the issue is the battery. So one of the first things I like to do is while the Apple logo is on the screen, I want to unplug it so I can see if the battery is the first cause, you know, first potential culprit. If I unplug it, you see how it instantly turns off. This tells us that there's no power on the board when I unplug it. So all the power seems to be supplied by the USB charger rather than the internal battery. So I unplug it so that usually that type of scenario is a bad battery. And in this case, I purposely left it unplugged so you guys can see that that is the case. So if I plug it back in, let's compare the USB charging current now with the plugged in battery. And you see how the charging current went way past one amp. That means there's actually a battery there that the phone is trying to charge or it is charging now, but this phone still will boot loop because it has other issues causing the boot looping. But if you have a scenario where it turns off instantly, then you know, check the battery. Now, another common culprit to a boot looping phone, especially iPhones with Face ID, is the ear speaker flex. So, I actually have one here. So this ear speaker flex goes to where the iPhone screen, so for example, this is an iPhone screen, uh, iPhone 11. And the Face ID plugs in here. And when you have the sensors here plugged in and an iPhone gets wet through the ear speaker, that liquid gets into the Face ID sensors. So when you have a screen like this with the Face ID sensors plugged in here, the flood illuminator and the ALS automatic light sensor plug in here, essentially this flex plugs in like lines up to the slots over here. And what happens is there's liquid that sneaks into the ear mesh and makes its way inside here and it gets on the components here and causes the phone to boot loop. So one of the steps you wanna take when, if, when you roll out the battery is open the phone and unplug all the flex cables. Usually iPhones with Face ID, it'll be the ear speaker flex. So it's kind of like the one here at the top that's on the screen side, but just in general, any iPhone, you want to unplug all the flex cables. So the only thing you want to leave plugged in is the charging port, battery, and screen. So unplug the ear speaker, unplug the cameras, unplug the power button, unplug, you know, these random antennas, unplug everything, and then see if it boots. If it's still looping, then that means there's something else causing it. Ideally, at that, in that point, you want to uh, get a known good housing or known good parts. So this means you get like a little kit 
I have a little kit like this for every model where I have my known good battery, known good charging port, known good screen. As you can see here, I have it labeled as tester. And essentially, I'll plug in the motherboard with just these three, plug it into charge, and see if the phone boots up. If the phone boots up, then that tells me something else on the on the original parts has an issue, like the screen can cause boot looping, the charging port can cause boot looping, the battery can cause boot looping. So once you rule out parts, you know you have known good parts and just the motherboard, and it's still boot looping, that tells you that the issue is now on the motherboard. And in that point, that's when I would say, you know what, plug it into your uh, computer. So for example, I use 3U tools, which you can download at 3U.com. Then what you wanna do is plug in the phone to the computer, now, one thing is an iPhone will not automatically be detected by the computer, especially if it's boot looping, it's never going to detect by a computer. You have to physically force it into recovery mode or DFU mode. Uh, for these type of boot looping cases, it doesn't really matter whether it's recovery or DFU. For 8 Plus, you could just hold the, home, uh, hold the power button forever, and eventually when it does the boot loop, it'll detect you pressing the power button and kick into recovery mode. They also sell uh, special cables, which I have here out of view, that, that will trick the phone into uh, booting up into recovery mode. So right now I'm holding power button, it's off. Now it's back on. All right, boot loop one more time. Now if it doesn't go into recovery mode, then we, there it goes. See, so if you just hold it long enough on iPhone 8, 8 Plus, 10, 10S, 10S Max, 11, 11 Pro, like basically iPhone 8 and newer, you could just hold the home button, the power button forever until it lands in recovery mode. If not, then you want to do the button sequence, which you can Google um, for your specific model. It kind of varies depending on which generation. All right, so now that we're in recovery mode, you can see on the screen, we're in uh the the pc has detected the phone so what you can do is click go flash and now there's two modes here there's easy flash which is kind of like the 3u versions of a flashing of the software essentially reinstalling the software or itunes flash and what i like to do is do both so first you can do easy flash select whatever version you want to um, you know, flash. I just go with whatever is the latest that is not beta. And then here at the bottom, there's basically two, two types of flashing. There's retain user data, which if you use iTunes, this would be the same thing as doing an update, meaning it reflashes the software, but the user data stays the same. This does not, this does not risk data loss. Although there is warnings here about data can be lost. I never had it, you know, wipe a phone. As long as you have this selected, you want to double, triple, quadruple check that is selected. And then you want to click flash. Now, if you want to erase all the data, wipe it or restore it as iTunes calls it, a restore will be this button, quick flash. This wipes everything and just reinstalls the operating system from, from scratch. So all your data is lost, but then you will then be at the hello screen, you know, the, like, like if it was a brand new phone. So in this case, this is not for data. We're trying to just repair it and customer is not, um, I've already done some diagnostics and it, it's gonna need a, uh, a new NAND. So we'll see here. So if you click easy flash, iOS version and quick flash mode, click flash, click flash. And then this is gonna go through the restore process. And our goal here is to see, you know, the phone is boot looping and we want to flash it to see what error codes or where in this process it fails. So we have a better understanding of what is causing the failure. Um, it's very important to take note of what happens here because depending on ex exactly what you see here is what will tell us the, the solution or the cause. A lot of people just say it doesn't restore and then they don't, they never mentioned you know, where it failed, what error codes or anything. 
So these error codes are very important. You know, what percentage it fails on here is very important. You know, the little words under the percentage are important. So if you're trying to diagnose something, take as much notes as to what you observe as possible, because this is how you diagnose properly with, with information. With, uh, you, you diagnose with tangible information that's quantifiable, that's you know, something you can point at. If you just use vague terms like it doesn't restore, you know, then it's hard to even, you don't know where to start, because you know, it could be a million things, very vague. So now you can see here on 3U tools, it's at 20%, it says unmounting file system, and now you can see the phone has disconnected from the PC. And this, this actually is not normal. And then look at that, we're back to uh, the recovery screen, meaning it has failed at this point. 3U tools might stay at this screen forever, but being that the phone has now essentially restarted and back to recovery mode, this means that the issue happened here at 20% where it says unmounting file system. So if you click here on the upper right, you'll see like a log of what happened. And if you look closely, you can see some keywords like uh, about to restore device, sending root ticket, uh, waiting for NAND, updating NAND firmware, sending NOR data, unmounting file system, unmounting file system, and eventually fails. So it looks like it's trying to write to NAND and in one of those steps, it just disconnects. So this is a, a sign that there is an issue with the board and specifically the NAND that it cannot write to it, meaning the NAND memory chip where the operating system is being installed to has an issue and it doesn't want to write to it. So you could click here on the bottom right. And look at that, I think it finally failed. Switch back, yeah, see it failed and you'll see it's in red. So like if you're trying to like have someone help you diagnose, take a screenshot of this whole screen so people can see, you know, this, they can see unable to restore. Also seeing here, you know, sometimes people forget to mention what model you're working on. So here on the bottom left, you can see it's an A+. Um, you know, it's always important to provide as much information as possible. Don't crop out, you know, just this little part and then you like leave out this or leave out this. So just, just, just some general guidelines. All right, so this failed, click OK. Now my, my next step would be iTunes Flash. So this is kind of the same thing in that it does the same thing, although the logs and, and the messages here are different. So this is why I like to do both, just to like, like I said, gather as much information as possible so we can make an informed decision. If you have very vague information, it's hard to make a under or know what to do next as far as your next step. So here, the same thing, just let it uh, restore here on the screen. Also pay attention to the, to the screen on the phone. You know, during this process, you'll see different things on the display. Like right now, Apple logo, now there's a loading bar. And usually the loading bar means that's is where it's gonna start to write the operating system onto the NAND memory. So the fact that we got to this point means it's starting the NAND writing process. It might be hard for you guys to see here on the camera. There's definitely a loading bar, a blank loading bar, and it should essentially fill up with white, you know, slowly across until it successfully goes through. But this is a problematic device, so let's see exactly what's happening. So you can see here at the bottom, kind of the same thing. It says updating S3E firmware. It's at 20% here on iTunes Flash. And you can see the log here has stopped. So even though it was scrolling, and now it's kind of stuck at this point, essentially at the same same point here than the regular easy flash. And if we just give it enough time, you can see now it has failed and you can see error nine. So this error when you use iTunes flash is more equivalent to the iTunes error codes. So what you can do is if you try with iTunes, you're more likely to get the same error code here 
And iTunes error codes, there's a lot more information on them than the 3U tools one, which might be different than the iTunes flash. So error nine here, and then the last, the last test, the easy flash was 20%, uh, you know, in the unmounting NAN step. That all points towards NAN being the issue in this device. In your device, you might get something else. You might get 4013, you might get error 78, error 26, error 14. Each one means different things. And it also kind of varies depending on model. So it's always important if you're gonna like ask for help, say what model device you have, you know, what you tried, did you try knowing good parts? Um, you know, what's the story behind it? Did it have a hard drop? Did it get wet? You know, stuff like this. And then go through this step, uh, easy flash, iTunes flash, and inform like, oh, it failed at 20%. And then iTunes flash gave me error nine or it gave me error 4013, gave me, you know, error, you know, whatever. So uh, just as a tip, error 78, that means software corruption pretty much on all models. So if you restore it, it should wipe it. It should fix it. Uh, if you do an update, you'll get error 78. Uh, error 1110, that's usually a software corruption. That one, you can wipe it if data is not important. If data is important, there is a way to recover it. And if you need that done, so let me know. <laughs> Send me a message, uh, link down below. Um, there's like error 14, which is also kind of similar software corruption. Um, there's uh, let's see what else. Error 26, which I haven't seen in a while, is um, also software corruption that needs a restore. Um, error 4005 is usually like a CPU issue or something like that. 4014 means NAN not detected. So either the NAND itself disconnected from the motherboard from a hard drop or the NAND itself just fully died. On this one, it hasn't fully died because you can still see something on the screen. You can see it like a different error code. This one's kind of partially dead, I guess you can call it. So, um, but yeah, that's the general steps you want to follow and then just kind of take it from there. So let's, let's do this specific repair. Error nine on iPhone 8 plus is going to be NAND being that it got error nine here and error, uh, you know, it filled at 20% on easy flash. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is just part one of this video series. This was just the theory behind boot looping devices, how to troubleshoot the issue. Now, part two, I'll actually cover the error nine repair. So make sure you subscribe to be notified when the next one comes out. I will also link it down below in the description once it's available. So smash that like button if you found this video helpful. Let me know down below in the comments which part of this video you found useful for yourself. If you've ever come across any boot looping devices and Share this video with all your friends. So thanks a lot for watching and I will see you soon.